Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Wassebauer. This is The Perfectionist Dream. We're gonna talk about the aesthetic importance and design of the eyebrow. I have no disclosures, and if you need any of this stuff, just give me a call. Eyebrows are the worst and the most difficult to do on anybody, and of course they bring out you know, the perfectionism in all of us, including in your patients, but they're full of challenging angles and directions, and they're right on the front of the face. There's nowhere you can hide. So the patients will come in expecting perfection, and you have to, it's your job to tell them that brows are not twins, they're siblings. So there's gonna be some asymmetry, and as a matter of fact, if you show them that there is asymmetry on even the most beautiful woman, uh, and if you cut this lady's face in half and kind of add these two sides together, just the left side together or the right side together, you don't want perfect symmetry. It doesn't look right. So make sure that your patients know this, and also point out that the stuff that they're seeing in magazines and online is retouched extensively, and natural brows have gaps and errant hairs that are gonna really make it look right. What doesn't look right is if you put hair that's too thick into a brow. You need only singles and you need to make sure that the caliber of the hair that you're transplanting is the same as the caliber of the target hair. And if they don't have any hair there, well then you can make it up as you go along, but otherwise it'll look too bristly and unnatural. Make sure you use magnification or a caliper. And then the next step that you're gonna do is take a bunch of pictures because this is your last chance to take any kind of before photos and sometimes they'll come back and they'll say, this wasn't here before and you, you gotta make sure you got the picture to prove that it is. One of the best things that you can do is to uh, use their facial shape to inform what brow would work there. This book is an excellent uh, uh, resource for that, and, and this is one of the diagrams from that book. You can also look at old photos uh, from the patient's past, if that's a, a possibility. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw on the brow, and this is where you work into the head, which should be at the, the medial canthus. The, the body is right through the middle, and you're going to be able to place the the um, arch in several different places, but usually you can look at the uh, the lateral part of the iris, and then the tail. Now, some people's tails are a little bit longer than others. Uh, I never touch my brows, so my tail is pretty long. Uh, you can use the Guntra Troba aesthetic analysis. Sometimes the bone structure is a little bit different and doesn't allow this analysis to really work. So you gotta work, you got to be flexible and work with what's there. Um, but you can use any pen to do this brow design. Some people use a Sharpie just to get the, the angles correct. I use a little blue pen, and mine actually comes out looking like this. But I draw on every single little thing, and this is just, you know, this is what works for me. Down here, it starts to herringbone. Uh, and sometimes patients come in, and they've got this whole dark thing drawn in, and that's okay, too. You know, you can work with whatever they've got to make your pre-op plan. Just as you're making the, the lines, realize that there's going to be a flow. It's going to be like something flying through the air, and they aren't going to like start in this direction and then head in that direction in a, a sharp angle immediately. There has to be some kind of transition there, otherwise it won't look right. Then pull out your sharpest, tiniest, finest little sight making tools. If you use cut to size blades, that works great. A 20 gauge needle that is flattened at the tip, or even a smaller gauge needle than that works really well. If they have curly hair, leave it unflattened, and then it, you can always do the two 90 degree bends, and then uh, use this flat part to make your sights, and that'll make it very parallel and very shallow. So those are useful, but I also like to make sure that the hair is longer, and that way I can see the direction that it's going in, if it's too high, if it's too low, uh, if it has any curl, to make sure it sweeps along. I leave it uh, at least one centimeter long so I can do the long hair preview. I almost always do my brows with a tiny little excision. Uh, if you use FUE, that's fine too, but you know, usually those hairs are too short for me to be able to see. I use FUE for my brow sur or for my touch-up surgeries, but not for my initial brow surgery. And then make sure that you numb and use a lot of tumescence in this area. The tumescence is not going, not only going to help you with uh, controlling the bleeding, but it's going to make the sites closer together when you actually make them. And as you're making them, try pulling it medially like this and give some tension because that way you're going to make the sites a little bit further apart. And if you pull medially rather than laterally, if you pull medially, the hairs are going to stand up. You're going to be able to make those sites, and then when you let it go, they lie down ever so nicely. Uh, try outlining the sites first just to get your, your uh, edge and then filling it in after that. Um, and you can get to the top of the patient's head, the side. Sometimes I'll make this brow while I'm standing on this side. Uh, whatever works for you or stand above the patient. Make sure you get your angles from that direction. Final considerations, make sure that your patients know they're going to need maintenance. They're going to need to trim the brows. They're going to need to have them grow long and wax them into place or uh, use brow gel. 
uh, incorporate all of this into your pre-op planning because otherwise they're going to come back and say, I don't know what you were talking about. And speaking of that, when they come back, I almost always do uh, touch-up surgery to make sure that there's if there's any little hairs there that they still get them uh, filled in. So this is a patient of mine. I definitely put a graft here in her second touch-up surgery and probably I put a graft in there as well. So plan on a little bit of a touch-up. Um, FUE is my typical approach for touch-ups and I give them a pen. I say make 10 dots and you know then we'll just fill them in and that, that usually helps. Here's a couple of results. Uh, this lady had some tattooing. If you have tattooing or blading that's going to leave some scar and the, the brows won't grow in as well. And you can see this is 10 days post-op. She still had some swelling. This is a guy, he wanted to look like this down here and we had to, you know, go through the fact that it's just not a realistic example and he still ended up with a beautiful, beautiful uh, appearance here. And then this is another lady who uh, we tried Revitabrow just to get this thicker and it definitely improved things. This is a uh, odd blue eye that she has. Uh, those are contact lenses. But once they were a little bit thicker, it actually made her more of a candidate because then we were able to take some hair out of the back and she planned to use Revitabrow for life. So the uh, now the donor hair actually matched the hair that we were trying to put it in right next to. So these are just some examples. Make sure you take the ABHR exam and thanks for listening to me today.